This is Coogan Cassis Highfield TV in association with MTK Scotland. Scotland. Today. I'm joined by, introduce yourselves actually. Cruel Jono. What's your real name? It's just keep it as Cruel Jono. Cool. <laughs> no, no, no. Gary I'm, Jacobs. I only thought I was going to introduce myself. Dr. Will Stokes. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Ian right, Ritchie. right, Ian, sit there. Ian, Ian sit there. Sit, sit there. Ian, Ian's right behind us, he's trying to go. Tam, Ga Tam, you've got to get in there. Gary Cornish's little brother. <laughs> <laughs> Better looking. Absolutely. Uh, huge night in Edinburgh. Start with you, Gary. Fantastic. Night. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, I think it's the best building that Scotland's ever had, to be honest with you. The, 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 for Scotland to get its first British heavyweight champion, we've never had anyone even. Uh, fight at heavyweight, so it'd be great for Gary, Stevie Simmons to fight, we've got Stephen Tiffany, Gary Murray, five, five, five fights on it, they're all 50-50 fights, and they're making break sort of fights for the fighters, and we'll see where the fighters go from there, so it's a great card. Jono, incredible to think that Scotland's never had a heavyweight British champion. I know, uh, till obviously getting mentioned, I never knew that at all, you know, we're all excited for Gary, we hopefully... Uh, he can do the business, cement his name in, in history, you know. So it's going to be a cracking fight, you know. It's a good matchup, so uh, I'm really looking forward to that fight. Because I didn't know this, and obviously I thought that Scotland's last British heavyweight champion was you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, John, John will retire before that happens. <laughs> no, unfortunately not, but um, I'm looking forward to, to seeing it tomorrow and just being a part of history. You know, hopefully it goes Gary's way tomorrow, so uh, I'll be there, hopefully. Watch this have been game made. I mean, Gary, unfortunately for Gary Cornish, people obviously keep referring back to his defeat to Anthony Joshua, which was about three years ago, no, two yeah, or three, two that, years ago. Well, that was a, that's, that's a big fight, isn't it? AJ's the, the man of the moment. He's the, 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 um, the heavyweight champ of the world, and he's, that's his only defeat. So to get defeated by or beaten by him is not so bad. Yeah. You know, he's been beaten by the guy that's the heavyweight champ of the world, so Gary can really cement cement his future in this one. If he goes on and he goes on and he wins a British title, he can go on and he can get another shot at it. There's no reason why not. So he's got, he's, he has to be full of belief. I think he is, and hopefully he can go and do it. Because again, the Anthony Joshua fight, that was his one and only. He's, he's an unbeaten guy. He's only been beaten by one guy. Who was he? Heavyweight champ of the world. No disgrace. Forget about it, move on. So, but this is a tough ask. It's all a tough ask. So there's like, I think there's four or five title fights on tomorrow, they're all 50-50 jobs and uh, the, the, the winners can go in and excel from there. Now the outsider here is this guy here <laughs> from MTK Birmingham. Uh, you've got Troy James on tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, talk to me a little bit about his fight tomorrow, Will. Yeah, Troy is um, he's at the stage of his career now where he's, he's, he's just ready for big fights. He's, he's, he only really lost to Flanagan and Liam Walsh and as, as Gary just said there, two world champions, there's no disgrace in it. Um, I think with the Liam Walsh as well, he only had four weeks notice, um, didn't go the distance, but with Flanagan it did, so he, he does have the quality about him, um, he's always campaigned at Super Feather, and now he's come down to Feather, he's got a proper dietitian on board, done his strength properly, and, and he's looking good, he did the weight really well, I've been with him the last few days, and, and he's strong, and he wants it more than anything, more than anything, and he's, um, he still knows his work in the game, and he's still, he's still after this British title, so... He's seen this now as a big fight with Tiff. Uh, basically, whoever's winning it may be going up, going on to them, them honours. So he, he's full of belief, and uh, we're behind him. We fully believe he can do it. Do you want to contribute to this discussion? I'm a Tiff, Team Tiff fan, isn't I? So me and Will are good pals with this. Uh, we're against each other at this time. Uh, I'm a big fan of Tiff, and I'm looking forward for him to get his chance tomorrow and for people to see what he's all about. And, uh, for me, it's fight of the night. It'll be a belter. It'll be an absolute cracker. So, looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it. Now, go on. This is where it all starts, really. This is where it all starts. I'll start with you, Gary. Scoring in boxing at the moment is a big problem. We've yeah. had a lot of occasions over the last few weeks uh, where judging, scoring has been brought up, and it's... people are saying it's killing boxing. People are talking about that ahead of great fights, i.e. Canelo Golovkin, Golovkin yeah. fight, and even so, Fury Fury and, and um, Joseph Parker recently as well. Is it's it a problem? All, it's how all people interpret it. You know, when you have what, if you were going to have fights that are that big, Canelo Golovkin, Fury Fury, world, they're really big fights. I think 
maybe there should be three independent judges, not somebody from your own country, because somebody from your own country should always see in your favour. They're going to do that anyway, and that's just the, the, the name of the game. It's like hometowners and people hometown advantage, and that's why you have hometown advantage. But when there's fights that big, there maybe should be three independent judges. Mm. You know, because what people see, usually that's what you see, and it's like how the score is really irrelevant when, it, when somebody's watching it and you see a winner. It usually works out that way. And yet, well, obviously, with the uh, Canelo Golovkin thing, we've got, a, I think, a Mexican lady who's very competent, but she's only seeing her man. She's not looking at what Golovkin's doing. She's not interested in what he's doing. She's just seeing what Canelo's doing. So it's a bit unfair on the judges as well because it puts a lot of pressure on them, especially when fights that are, that are going global, the whole planet's watching it. I mean, it really puts them under the microscope. So those type of fights, it needs to be, I think there should be independent judges made from neutral countries, but even from neutral countries, if you're coming someone to watch Canelo go up, and they'll, 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 be, they'll be a fan of one or the other, because the fighters are they're, they're, they're huge, the world, they're global stars. Gerard, problem in boxing, is this? You know, it's, it's one of these sports where you know, each judge sees it the way they see it and they favour certain things about a fighter. So, of course, uh, how I would judge a fight would not necessarily how, be how Gary judges a fight. So I think you're always going to have that problem where people see things differently. Mm. But, I mean, it's not a new thing and it won't be a, an no. old thing because it will continue to be a topic amongst, especially close fights. You know. Yes, but that's always the case with close fights. It's, all, it's how people interpret it. You know, somebody sees it one way, somebody sees it the other way. I mean, there's fights when they obviously the Canelo Golovkin, that's what we're talking about. Somebody's got Canelo by eight rounds and somebody's got Golovkin by four. That's, that's a difference of ten rounds. That's not the fight that you're watching. Do you know what I mean? It's like somebody's got eight one way and four the other. So it's just, it's just how somebody interprets it, interpretates it. And it's always down to the fans. People are boxing judges are usually fans, fans as well. But when you get huge fights, I mean, they're colossal fights, there's global fights, there's always going to be that little bit of, you know, somebody sees it one way and somebody sees it the other way. So it's very difficult. It'll always happen, it'll always go on. But like, there you go, they'll make some more money, they'll have a second one. And maybe if they have a second one, there's got to be a third, isn't there? Mm. <laughs> so it's all about making money. Did you get, ever get robbed in any of your fights? No, I made sure it decisive. <laughs> 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 no, I get robbed in one, but, you know. And avenged it's, it's it, and so avenged it. And avenged it, so. I said done and dusted now, so I have to think about school's it chapter now, so I can relax, sit back, watch now, the boys now, do the now, hard work. Now, now when the bell goes, he goes down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not just in boxing, but have you ever been robbed? Constantly, <laughs> man. <laughs> Always <laughs> robbed. <laughs> Usually after, I know. <laughs> oh dear. Um, well, you contribute to that or add to that? I don't really like that question, ask me something else. Why do you like it? Say what you want. You just had Gary sum it up, John I'll sum it up. I couldn't really say it any, any different, to be honest. I think definitely what Gary said there with hometown judge, they are going to be watching their man. Um, maybe more focusing on his defensive attributes than the other guy's attacking attributes. So it, it does kind of make sense to keep that away. But other than that, you know, look at the, the betting and the process of how judges are going to you know, get made and how they're getting a, a status to be a judge. Maybe that needs to look a bit, a bit deeper into. I did hear that the judge, the lady judge, who was the Mexican judge that got the uh, Canelo uh, Golovkin decision way off, I actually heard she was the people that, that, that trained the judges. So um, it's not really a good look, is it really? If she's the person that trains the other judges to come into it, where are we going with the sport? I don't, I don't really want to go into it because I'm, I'm a little bit like, I don't, I don't upset anyone, so. <laughs> don't upset anyone. Gary, was going to say something? No, just yeah, no, no, just the. I wasn't really going to say anything about that. Yeah, it's just it's, it's just is how people interpret how they see the fight. Simple fact is, when somebody's watching on television or watches, you see more on TV than you do see it live. When somebody's watching on television, the look of the fight usually tells you who's won it. You know, one guy's won it, but you do get the fights. We're always saying that the defensive guys. You know, Canelo was. Pretty defensive, he was pretty good in the defensive side against the Golovkin thing. But again, you've got the Mexican lady, seeing for the Mexican boy. You've got the other boy, seeing for because he was doing it, being defensive. 
and he was very good at being defensive and he never got hit cleanly, he wasn't hit cleanly, he never looked in trouble really a lot. That all goes towards scoring your points because some fighters fight defensively. Mayweather, Whittaker, Buddy McGuck, back in the day, these boys are all defensive fighters, they fight off the back foot, so that's what they, they want you to do, the people are running onto them, so they, they end up like, make the slip, make you miss and make you pay. So it depends how people interpret it, interpret it. I think it's just, because it's so big, the fight's global, and there's so much money involved, hence that's obviously, but the, the judging is, I don't, they're, not, they're not bribed, they're not blackmailed, there's none of that going on, it's just people have their favourites. Mm. And I think it's a difficult one to score, especially when you're talking about the monster fights, colossal fights like, like, like the Glock and Canelo. Well, 2017 has obviously been uh, a good year. A lot of big fights have been made, uh, including what we've just been talking about, the yeah. Canelo Glock fight. We're going to see Lomachenko and Rigondo uh, in another, another one of those fight. this year. But it has been a good year for, well, the best in the weight fighting the best. Yes, absolutely, and even if you're looking at even like our shows with Sam's putting on shows or the NTK shows, our fights tonight, they're 50-50 fights. There's no shoe in for anybody on these fights right on the, that are all fighting for titles. These kids are all, it's not make or break, it's where the ones that uh, could be at the defining hour tonight, because it's like British titles or uh, world titles or whatever they're at, you know, there's two British titles being fought for tonight. That, to me, as I've always said, it's probably the hardest title to win. Never mind a world title, you can pick a world champion to go and fight and a vacant title. But when you're fighting for a British title, the guy in Britain wants to win it as much as you. That To win your national title is just is, is, is an awesome achievement. So these fights end up better than some of the world title fights. So even on, on lesser of that, the, the, the fights that are made by MGM, we've got fighters fighting each other tonight. So it's like the, the, the winners of one, they might fight for world titles. There's no, nobody's getting protected. It's like, you want to fight? Let's find out who's the best. Because mm. ultimately that's what it is. It's all about to get into being a European, a British, a Commonwealth, and then all, all, all of a sudden ultimately a world champion. That's what it's about. You know, everyone can be a professional fighter. They can all turn pro. You have eight fights in a year. But the thing is, you know, end goal, world title. That's what, that's what we're all in it for, to be the best on the planet. Jono? Got Ricky Burns in action on Saturday night in Manchester against uh, Anthony Quala. But um, the one that people are talking about from from here is is Josh Taylor, isn't it? Uh, someone who who's done everything right and potentially looks like he can go on and and be well. I think Josh Taylor is a superstar in the making. If he keeps his feet in the ground, does what he's done, the pedigree that he's came from, the amateur background, I I like him. He's a cracking human being, he's a lovely man and he does does it right and he's just got the talent. He's one of those guys, if you want to go back and you look at like even like the Amir Cans and you look at the Alex, uh, who's the Leiden boy? Who's the Leiden boy? No, Alex. Oh, Alex oh. Arthur. You know, these, these type of pedigree boys, I think Josh could be Scotland's best ever. I mean, Kevin Cannon for me is Scotland's best ever because he done it when there was one title and there's all, you know. But Josh Taylor, I think, is one for the a very big, big prospect for the future. Definitely, no, no doubt about it. Quality man, quality person. You agree with that? Yeah, definitely. You know, yeah. When you watched Harry Davis fight last week, he showed, <laughs> yeah. it just showed how good uh, Taylor was. Because obviously, Harry really performed on the night, done really well. Uh, but then, obviously, you can't forget that he got beat off Taylor clinically. So, uh, it just shows exactly what kind of pedigree he is. You know two good fighters and came up. But aside from Josh Taylor, you probably, you probably know more so than anyone. Who else is coming through that we need to kind of keep an eye on, in your opinion? From, there's, lot, from there's nobody at that level, I don't think. But there's a lot of kids there that, 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 that may come that may come good for. There's a lot of them that are putting hard work in. For me, tomorrow, obviously, the, the Philbin Pagan fight yes. is one I'm really looking forward to, you know. Because I know both lads really well, and you know I think it's a proper, proper 50-50 fight, and I think uh, it's going to be a treat, you know, for everyone watching. Uh, I just can't split it. You know, yeah, I'm just that's looking a forward to. Fight. I'm just looking forward to seeing uh, seeing what happens with that. And obviously tomorrow night is live on Box Nation as well, which is great Brilliant. Uh, for well, Scottish boxing for MTK, and yeah, it's great for MTK. It's also, in particular, even better if, please God, Gary. Cornish wins, first time a Scotsman uh, has ever 
contested for the British Heavyweight title. But that'd be, it'd be great, it'd be great for all the, the, the fighters and all the rest of the guys. It means if we can get some Scottish champions, there'll be more shows on up here. It gives all the undercard, it gives all the kids coming through a chance to go on television as well and be put on bigger shows. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one tomorrow. But they're all 50-50 shots. They really are. I mean, it's like, it's an excellent card. Probably the best card that I've seen in Scotland, maybe ever. There you go, and I've been about for a long time. I don't think they're... I think Sam Kynock has put on a card that is just like, nobody can call anything. You have, we have our opinions, yeah. we like this one, we like that one. I mean, the Reese Peg and Tommy Vilman one, that's just an awesome fight. And then you've got Stephen Tiffany against Troy, Troy James, who's another terrific fight. And that's not even a title fight, that's that's on the undercard. I mean, that's a, that's a make a break fight for, the, for some of these kids. Yeah, so as far as the build goes, I think it's tremendous and it's good for Scotland that we can actually get fights like that here. We look forward to tomorrow night. I've never seen you so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting ready, he's getting warmed up for tomorrow. Don't worry about it. No, looking forward to tomorrow. You know, it's going to be some top fights. Like I say, you know, we've got a boy on early. Uh, once we, we get out of the road, then we can enjoy the rest of the show, you know, uh, enjoy the production because then they were all boxing fans as well, so we want to yeah. just sit back and enjoy, like I say, the M M MTK boys, find the MTK boys and, you know, some good opportunities for the lads from tomorrow to progress and see how it goes, so, yeah, I'm glad I'm there anyway. We're glad you're there. Happy to be a part of it. Good. My partner, my partner. Couldn't do it without him. Just, fi just the final thing, obviously, the, the rise of MTK. In the last five years, they celebrated their five-year anniversary the is other it, day. I think we've only been going for MTK has now changed the name from MGM, so MTK is really new, isn't it? MTK, we're just a, MGM. We're just, we're just a new company. We know. We're, just, we're a couple of weeks old and we're pretty big being a couple of weeks old. <laughs> but, I mean, Frampton uh, joined up recently and obviously a stable of consists of people like Billy Joe Saunders. Uh, it's and, tremendous. It's tremendous, you know, Smith what the guys at the top are doing with Matthew and all the rest. So I think it's just an amazing thing what they're doing for the boxers because it's all about the boxers. Matthew's a, an ex-champ and he just wants to give back and give him back by getting involved in the business and giving all of us the opportunity to go and do that. I think it's a tremendous thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he's great for boxing. I think MTK is brilliant for boxing and it's, and it's only going to get bigger and better. I mean, because it's like everybody's singing from the same hymn sheet. We all want the same thing for the fighters. It's about time rather than the big promoters. You know, they come in. It's now about the fighters, really. Because that's what the MTK have made it about. About the fighters rather than about the promoters. And, but I think it's great. The future of the future is looking good, really good. For the fighters, MTK is brilliant for the fighters. It really is probably one of the best management companies for fighters. Because what, what you'll get with MTK is you'll get your opportunity. But you have to put in the work and you have to live the life. If you do that, we'll take you places. It is about looking after fighters, John. Of course, if, if the fighters are happy and they, you know, they're waking up, they're training on time and they know they're getting something back in return and getting looked after, then it's half the battle, you know. And uh, the way I see it, uh, all the boys are getting looked after, everybody's happy and, you know, it shows, um, it shows after the fights, they're so grateful. So, you know, the only way is up, you know. And we'll obviously you look after your own fighters at MTK Birmingham, so yeah. all under the same branch, obviously. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, as I said, it's, it's a team effort. Not one of our branches here would get big by not working together. Since we started last year, um, we, we got there not on our own. We had loads of help with Sam Kinnock, loads of, loads of help with Anto over in Marbella, Marbella lads. We're in constant, we, we constantly talk to Johnny Roy, Derry Matthews. We, we've only got so good with, with everyone working together. So, um, and, and, and the fact that myself and Seamus, who, who kind of run the Birmingham here, the fact that we can literally make a phone call to anyone in the team, whether it's anything to do with promotions, we ring Sam, uh, the sparring, anything like that. We've got Matthew, you know, any, just a phone call is there. He's got a knowledge and experience from from all of his career. So managing the fighters, it's okay being a manager, but when you're a manager that used to be a fighter, you know the game from both sides, you know. So that's that's why I think there is such a good job. Everyone, everyone kind of knows what they're doing. Everyone sees things from the fighters' perspectives. Um, and there's, there's no hidden agendas. Everyone just wants to do the best thing for the fighters. And I think it shows. That's why it keeps on growing. Uh, bigger and bigger because we do do a good job mm. and um, we do care about our fighters. 
Watch out for MTK Sri Lanka. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait till that comes in. I bet he's holiday. I heard you won a gold medal, didn't you? What's that? I said, I heard you won yeah, a gold medal. With my experience as yeah. a Sri Lankan Olympic gold medalist, I, I feel like I have something for to what? pass on. For what would you get a gold medal for? What? Oh. Sri Lanka. Cricket. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 All yeah, right. we can arrange our spot, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you, want, you want to fight the old man? Would you want to fight the old man? Yeah, I'll mean, smash your brains. You probably off. would do. You probably would do. I'm 51. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> my money's on cooking. They asked me to spar, and I said, you know what? I'm retired, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jono, Gary, Will. Cheers, Cook. Where, where are you gone? Where are you gone? Can you, you come and say bye properly? The chat was that bad, I had to go. <laughs> oh, Alright. It's bad enough, man. Yeah. Didn't have to go. Jeez, you, can't, you, can't, <laughs> you can't get good help these days. Yes. Thank you very much, Sean Tyfield TV, and uh, let's hope we have guys. a great show tomorrow night here in Edinburgh at the Meadow Bank Cheers, Arena. Alright? Thank you. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Cook. Yeah, whatever. <laughs>